All right, let's welcome in uh, our friend Drew Holiday coming live to us from an outlet mall parking lot. <laughs> Drew, what's up, man? I got to save money, man. I'm not making enough. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's talk about your last month. There's so much to get to. It's been quite the ride. You w- you win an NBA championship. You're you're now a gold medalist. Um, can I wanted to start kind of with the decision to to actually play in the Olympics because it was pretty much like a three day turnaround for you. What what went into that decision and how and 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 how much did you sort of belabor over that? Yeah. Um... You know me pretty well, and you know how much I, I love being with my family. So it was uh it was hard, man. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go. Uh, but talking to my wife, you know how pushy she can be, um, and then talking to my agent just about the opportunity and it's kind of once in a lifetime and how cool it would be to have two Olympians in in one household and for our kids to see it. Uh, I decided to do it, and when they asked me, I think we we're in the middle of the Hawks series, we were playing against the Hawks. And at that time, I'm drained. I mean, we played Brooklyn before that, and that was draining. And then the Hawks are this young team, and they're really good. And I'm like, man, do I really want to go? But um, we ended up going two days after after we won the championship. Uh, me and Chris hopped on the plane. We went and picked a book and uh, played the next day. <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to get to this because I don't think enough people quite realize this. So you win a championship. You guys have the parade. Take us through from the parade to when you played against France in the first game of the Olympics. Yeah, we had the parade. After the parade, the next day, we were supposed to leave at, I think, 1 o'clock uh, Central Time. Our... Me and Chris's plane from Milwaukee was delayed and we actually didn't leave until six. We were supposed to actually go pick up book in Phoenix, but we met him in Seattle because that was where I guess we're all going to, we're going to go from Milwaukee to Phoenix, Phoenix, Seattle, and then leave out of Seattle. Um, So we ended up just meeting each other in Seattle. Uh, So already a long day, but like (laughs) the longest day, uh, so after we got in that morning at like one o'clock, um, Pop introduces us. And I mean, he, he says hi to us and whatever. He's like, yeah, we're going to throw you guys in there tonight. <laughs> so we, uh, we try to get some sleep. We go to shoot around. But our game is at nine o'clock. So we have a lot of time to sleep or whatever. And by this time, my body's off. I don't even know what's going on with me. I'm just sleeping. And nine o'clock that night, I think Zach got two quick fouls and they threw me right in. Literally right in. And I'm like, oh, all right, well, I guess this is how it goes. How are you how are you uh forgetting the tiredness and everything like that? How are you physically? Uh I don't know. I'm just like in a daze. <laughs> I'm in a daze for real. It, it's it's you're in a different country and you're in a weird place. Um but honestly, man, I, I think it was just because, like, I'm with some of the best players in the world, and it's the Olympics, and I'm not tr- really trying to embarrass myself. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't really have time to, like, be tired or, or feel weird. Given given the, the losses in the exhibition games, and then you guys lose the first game against France, did you sense uh, any doubts coming from your team about whether or not you guys could get the gold medal? Um, from the team, no. I mean, you know how, you know how we are, you know how NBA players are. Like, we like, man, we the best in the world. Like, <laughs> like we're, we're the best in the best league in the world in the best basketball league in the world. Um, so from the team, we're like, nah, there's, there's no way that this was one little, one little setback. But right after that game, everybody was like, we're going to meet France back in the finals and we're going to whoop their ass. <laughs> If you we're gonna we're gonna talk a bunch about the playoffs and your championship run, but if you had to sort of rank the gold medal versus the NBA championship, which one would rank higher? NBA championship. <laughs> the struggle to get there and the amount of years that I put in 
to okay, first the amount of years that you put in to win the NBA championship is 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 insane. Um, and then the struggle to get there, like yeah, we swept Miami, but it wasn't it wasn't easy. Uh, took Brooklyn to seven, that was hard. Um, the Hawks to six, and then even even Phoenix to six. like it was just it was really hard, and I didn't know it was that hard. I know they always say it's hard to win, but that was extremely difficult and extremely rewarding uh, at the end of it. After for the Olympics, it was like, all right, we lost to France and we actually should have beat them. Like we were up 10 three times. We played Iran, we played Czech Republic, and like we beat the we beat the snot out of them. Um, and then every other team after. I mean, Australia, they were up 15, and I think uh for a second, I think they thought they had us, but I feel like we always knew that we were going to beat uh, one goal. In the in the NBA championship, I'm like, man, Brooklyn, after we lost our, our second game in Brooklyn, I was like, holy shit, what's going to happen? Like, they beat us by like 20 the first time and then like 30 the second time. And I think, if, at least for myself, I was like, I was I was a bit nervous. But just the difficulty, man, just, and the, the amount of time, like it, it was a lot, but it was way more rewarding. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, I have some questions about that Brooklyn series, but I want to, I want to just, cause you, cause you kind of brought it up. Drew, can you just explain to the listener, the viewer, sort of the difference, this is your first Olympics, the difference between high level international play and the NBA, NBA playoffs, NBA regular season, whatever, but just the difference between the two. Um. Yeah, let me start off with international play. It's a, uh, it's different. It's different. It's it's physical. Yet they try to. It's gonna sound bad. I feel like they kind of try to protect basketball. Like in in today's game, which like you're one of the best at at drawing fouls, getting like from a jump shot or somebody coming underneath you or something like that. That doesn't work at all. And I think we kind of saw it if we watched the exhibition game where K-Love pump faked and then kind of jumped into the guy. They don't they don't call that. This is like kind of like you have to be a little a little bit tougher. Um, you can body all you want. Uh, like defensively, like that's probably why I excelled so much because I can body anybody that I wanted to. But if you reach, they're going to call a foul. Super weird. If you reach and like don't touch them, they're gonna call a foul. But if you body him, you can body him all you want. Um, if you're in the post, you can dribble for as long as you want, as many times as you want. And I'm like, this is so weird because obviously in the league, you have five seconds. Like nobody's gonna be dribbling for seven seconds trying to post somebody up and then dunk on them. But Rudy Gobert dribbles 20 times and then just <laughs> like just dunks the ball. And I'm like, this is. This is not okay, but I also feel like back in the day, that's kind of what it was like. Like, it was a bit more physical. There's no three seconds, so you can just pack the paint. Um, and then the three-point line is, like, JJ, you would have a field day. The three-point line is so short. <laughs> and I'm like, we're shooting regular, like, we're shooting regular twos at, from, from three. Right. Uh, the NBA game is more fast paced it's more uh entertainment i guess i would say uh where they love to see you score they live they love to see lobs and dunks um screen and rolls is a lot of the nba game where overseas they just move the ball like a lot of motion um a lot of moving your body. And it's, I mean, obviously, if you're a basketball player, you can do both. But the NBA, I feel like the athleticism. Um, and if you're a scorer, the NBA is more for you. You said protect. They protect the game. It sounds like to me like they protect the defender overseas, whereas in the NBA, they protect the offensive player. And by the way, I love the subtle dig. I love the subtle dig that basically I need to get tougher. <laughs> it's not even it's not it's not even that. It's just like 
if you you could be as tough as you wanted to there, like you could body all you wanted to, but obviously like in the NBA, if you buy like if I bodied and then flops, it's like to me, I guess that's messing up the game. Like you can be tough, you can you can you can body, you have to be strong because that all that flopping stuff doesn't really work. Drew, what was the what was the experience like of playing with Kevin? Obviously, you've played against him for so many years. Oh my gosh. He's unreal. He's 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 unreal. Uh he makes the game look so easy. Nothing phases him how he plays. I mean, yes, he's seven feet, but it's like he doesn't he doesn't see anybody. It's just like him and the him in the hoop. It's like cone drills. It's just if you were gonna if you're going to just go work out and get into your bag and uh, work on something like that's his game and nobody faces him. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing to see. We got into a discussion, Tommy and I did without a guest on last week's mailbag episode, just sort of about who the best player in the world right now. And I sort of made the comment like Kevin doesn't count, but you played with Giannis, the finals MVP. MVP. I played with Luca this past year Play just played with Kevin. Who do you think is the best player in the NBA right now? And you don't say Giannis because he's your your teammate. Say Giannis because you believe it. <laughs> Man, dude, <laughs> I love Giannis. I do. Um, obviously, because he had a fifty point game and two forties in the final. Luca's tough. Luca is so good to me. Kevin Durant, though. Okay, you mean like all around? Yes, just like the best player. The best player. Who's the best player in the NBA next year? Dang, bro. I'm not sure I can answer that question. Okay, that's fair. That's that's, a, that's probably a smart non-answer, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I can answer that. We're still, leaving, we're, like, we're still leaving out somebody and in, in maybe yeah. a couple of them in the, in the Western Conference that are... that are freaking insane. We don't want to be disrespectful to anyone. Drew, I want to ask about... The, the, we're, we're going to talk about the net series, but I wanted to ask about Kevin with the shot in game seven. Did you, what, what did you think? Did you think that you were done? No, I saw his foot on the line. Like I actually had no question that it was a two. Yeah. I think everybody else was shocked that it wasn't a three, but the angle that I was at, I was like, no, he, that big toe was on the line. That long, that, that long big toe was on the line. So I was pretty confident in it. Um, now, the second one, the one in overtime, that one I was nervous. The one I was guarding him, because it was like when I turned to look, it was dead on. And I'm like, oh my God, like he did it again. <laughs> but he ended up missing, thank God. I also had the perfect angle from the stands on his shot. <laughs> <laughs> And, but I was like, I was like, why is it? I mean, I know he hit the shot, like, but, but I was like, there's a lot of people in this building right now that are celebrating like the Nets just walked off and won game seven. I thought it was just me. I thought it was just no. me. I'm like, that was the vibe I was getting from the stands. I want to be clear. I was in the stands. I was, I was an observer. I was a fan at the game. <laughs> no, you, you're right. No, you know, you're right. I, I thought the same thing. Like, did I miss something? We, we've talked about this a few times. I want to get your perspective on this because you were in the locker room. You were on the team. But the chatter uh, on social media, on traditional media, uh, really after even game one of the Nets series, was that the Bucks were done. And, 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 and then you know they, everybody sort of wrote your obituary, especially you, you get blown out game one with, with Harden out. Game two, you lose. Bucks are done. Uh, what was your perspective there? And what was your team's perspective? Um, game one, uh, it was like they did what they were supposed to do. We're in Brooklyn. They won a game. And I feel like we didn't look too much further into that. Like they, the Brooklyn Nets did what they're supposed to, they, they did what they're supposed to do. They protected home court. Uh, the media and all that, you know, I do my best to try to stay, stay, stay clear. Um, but you do hear it. Uh, game two though, you heard it a lot. Game two, I was, and not even because of the media, but game two, I think the way that we lost, I, me personally, I was like, man, like 
we really got to get our shit together or this can get bad really, really quickly. But bro, I, I don't, the media sucks. <laughs> that, <laughs> I mean, like it could either be super great, but like it, it sucks, bro. Like if you're, if you're a mental midget or not even just a mental midget, but if you have like one bad day where you kind of just succumb to the things that you hear, it could be, it could be really difficult. And people are like, people's opinions are, can be pretty harsh. We live, we live in a hot take culture. That's just part of it. And I'm glad you brought this up. I want to talk about your, your ability to bounce back. But in, b- before that, I want to touch a little bit on another sort of media narrative in, in this uh, Bud doesn't make adjustments. You guys beat the Heat 4-0. They had beat you last year. Clearly, there was an adjustment in that series before the series even started. You get down 2-0 to Brooklyn. Uh, you're down after one game to Atlanta. You're down 2-0 to Phoenix. Can you just talk a little bit about the adjustments that Bud made in each series? Um. So... Brooklyn, well, the 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 Heat. I think the adjustments were very very minor. Um, I think Dragic ended up starting at one point, and uh, they ended up putting me on him. So they felt like the series or the last time they played him in the bubble, Dragic was a big key, which he was. He was he was killing. Um, so they kind of put the stopper on him. Um, so taking, taking, taking away his, his production or even just lessening his production, uh, helped us out. Brooklyn, Bud came to us and asked us for our opinion. And he came to us as a team. He came to us as captains. It was like, what do you think it is? Or what should we do about this? Uh, should we be helping off when Katie drives? Should we just like tuck play Katie? One on one, and have him try to score fifty. Because uh, at, at that time, after game two, Kyrie was still playing, and or even even game one, like Kyrie was still playing. So when we first started, we were trying to like protect the paint and try to take away threes. But I mean, they had Joe Harris, that Kyrie, that Katie, like they had uh, some three point shooters, and Blake was killing from three point line. So we made an adjustment where. When it came down to so it, was like, all right, uh, KD's going to have to beat us. And I remember I I think the, sec- the third game, I think I started like kind of face guarding Kyrie, trying to take him out of the game and then letting everybody else try to do something. After Kyrie went down, uh, that's where we kind of went to like, all right, KD's going to KD's gonna have to beat us. Like he's literally going to have to score 60 points a game for them to win and he damn near did it he damn near did it <laughs> he damn near did it well i was gonna drew i was gonna ask about i was gonna ask about game five talk about the bounce back i mean just from an from as a casual observer watching that it's one of the best playoff performances of all time and so like when you go up against something like that is there a part of you which is just like just like we can't do anything with this guy okay game five our confidence is so like our confidence is so high and we played well game five in brooklyn and in the game, you can you can feel that like we feel that we have a ch- like we have a chance to win this game. And KD just he just said, "Nah, not to, not today." And I remember after the game, we're like, "Exactly what you said." Like, what el- like what else can we do? Like, trip them? Uh, <laughs> nothing. There's nothing else you can do. And after the game, was like, all right, well, we're going to have to go home and win game six. But KD, bro, I'm telling you, I think now that I've played against KD in this series, and again, I played against him in in Golden State, completely different. Like, he literally carried carried his team. And it was, it was insane to be a part of. One of the things that I noticed in that series from game one to game seven is that offensively, there was more matchup hunting on on your guys part and there was a couple guys on the nets where you know their minutes went down completely and 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 that's a that's a that's a that's been a knock on bud a little bit i think is just like there's a system we're going to run our system whereas in that series there was a there was a shift throughout that series where all of a sudden you're going to go at people if they're on the court yeah um 
I would say on from from both sides. Uh, there are a couple. There are a couple of players on that team who where their minutes decreased. Uh, Bobby Portis, which in the Miami series, I mean, lit it up. Uh, Brent Forbes, which in the Miami series, the Miami series, I mean, was on fire, and theirs limited because, I mean, Brooklyn was really. I, I feel like they were just trying to pick on them. Um, and then the same thing for them. Like Shamit quite played quite a bit, but his dropped. Um, who else? There were guys that were like, no, if he's on the court, go at him. Like, that's the matchup. That's that's the advantage. So that was kind of the first time I'd been in a series where it was matchup for matchup. Who, like, who are we going at? What was the level of exhaustion by the OT of Game 7? Because watch, watching it, uh, I wasn't at the game, but watching it just on TV, it's like not – this is just literally a battle of a war of attrition. After that game, I was like, I cannot wait for it all to be over. <laughs> it was so like ment- mentally, it was it was draining. Again, mentally it's draining because I feel like you do everything you can to stop somebody and it's not working. And Kevin Durant is pretty much just like ment- like this is gonna sound weird, mentally penetrating you. <laughs> <laughs> and like he's not and he and he's not stopping. And then physically, oh oh my gosh. Physically it is I was I was hurting. Every, I mean everybody was. Matter of fact, you can see KD at, uh game seven. Like you knew he was tired, you knew he was gassed. But man, we both teams left it out there. That was after that series, I'm like, man, look, whatever happens after like we have to win now. We we did too much and, and came too far. We have t- we get we have t-shirts made from certain things that are said on the show and um, that's got to be one of my favorite <laughs> quotes meditated. from the entire <laughs> podcast show KD is mentally penetrating <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're talking a little bit about just like you know you you obviously stay off uh, as best you can social media uh, during the season and and sort of blocking out noise <clears throat> but you know for you like you had, you had a four for twenty game in the NBA Finals. You had a five for twenty three game at one point in a previous series. Um, the game after that, you were fourteen for twenty three with thirty three points. After the game four in the finals, four for twenty. Game five, you go twelve for twenty, twenty seven and thirteen. Then have a damn near triple double in game six. How are you able to bounce back from from off nights like that? Honestly, I don't look too deep into shooting bad or shooting badly. Um, and it's probably because I know I can do other things. I can do other things other than scoring. Uh, I can affect the game with my defense. I can affect the game uh, with my ability to pass and play make for other people. So I know shooting, um, I mean, you're going to have bad nights. And I mean, four for 20 is pretty bad, but... I just feel like there's other things that I that I'm gonna do, and then I think too if I'm not aggressive, if I'm if I'm passive, that's even worse than going four for twenty. Uh, I feel like me being passive really really hurts my team. So um, bouncing back from there, it was just kind of like locking in. Uh, you know how like you kind of go home and you and you look at the film, you're like man, that was a bad shot. Or man, I just compounded a bad shot with another one because I was frustrated at the first shot. Um, But I really do have a pretty good support group. You know, I I have people who are like really positive with me. And then at the same time, they keep on telling me to shoot. And this is in like, this is including the team. This is Giannis, Chris, this is Bud. Uh, This is the whole coaching staff. They like, I don't care that you went four for 20. And then once I go home, uh, my family's saying the same thing. I got two brothers that play in the league and they like, look, if you're not going to shoot them, I, I don't know what you're out there for. And my wife is crazy as hell. She like, yeah, don't come home if you're not going, if you're not going to shoot. <laughs> that for real. She like, don't like you made it this far and you, all of a sudden you like, you're going to hold up. No, like <laughs> go out there and shoot if you miss. So what? So that, they give me a lot of, a lot of confidence. Uh, that's also a part of, staying out of that negativity that you always hear because I feel like you wear you hear one negative thing man that that can mess you up even though 
you have 10 positive things that somebody's trying to tell you. Shout out to Lauren Holiday, who my two, t- two takeaways from this episode are that uh, obviously that Katie is mentally penetrating and that two, Lauren is p- indirectly responsible for both your N- NBA championship and your gold medal, which is fucking awesome. He's a thug. But by, by the way, I texted, uh, I was texting earlier with uh, someone in your organization. I'm not going to say who it was, but someone in your organization, not a player. And the exact quote was basically, uh, Drew is the reason we won. Specifically, Drew's defense is the reason we've won. We were hyping your defense all last fall. I don't want to take credit for it. I was, we, hi, you, are the, you are the defender, but we were hyping it all last fall. You get first team all defender. You basically showed the basketball world in the playoffs and in the in, in in the Olympics how good you are defensively. Do you feel like you're the best defender in the world? Yeah. I always have. I always have, no question. But I mean, I'm not really the type, you know, I'm not really the type to to tell people that. Like I want people to see it. I want I want them to have their like form their own opinion and 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 be like, yeah, he can he can really go. I know a lot of players knew that I could I could play defense, right. and that was a part of the discussion uh, I would say last year. And thanks thanks to my great friend JJ and and KD, <laughs> that was that was out that was out there a little bit. But it was really cool to finally see like, bruh, defense is a real thing in the NBA. And like I do feel like people should be rewarded for the for the defense, not the fake ride and all that, but like actually making good plays on the defensive end um, stops against some of the best players in the world. It was it was it was a joy for me. I'm not gonna lie. I love this because I'm like trying to put myself in your shoes in your mindset and like basically being elite at some at something, knowing you're elite at something doing it year in year out and not i mean you you had made one all defensive team or one all first team all defensive team and one second team all defensive team prior to this year but uh, it just not until this year you were not getting the, the recognition that you deserved and like it wasn't like you were toiling away in anonymity like pe- people knew that you were a good basketball player but i I'm, I'm just happy for you that you're finally getting that recognition thanks man it was um it was it was it was cool to see like people putting up highlights of somebody's defense instead of it always just being these buckets. But thank you, thank you. Now it, it a, a lot of it is is owed to people like like you and Kevin and and guys who like I feel like really cherish the work that somebody puts in and, and sees it like for their own with their own eyes and. And you're a part of it. I feel like, and even talking to Draymond, talking to Draymond in the um, during the Olympics and having defensive conversations, I'm like, I see why he's one of the best defenders in, in, in the world. But we also can see that basketball is more so about offense. And I feel like that's not basketball. Like that's a that's only one half of basketball. There is another half of basketball that that should be rewarded as uh, rewarded as well so but thank you sir tommy have you ever pulled into the driveway after a trip to the grocery store only to realize you forgot that one key ingredient for dinner yes frequently well now you have options get the groceries you need or a backup meal from your favorite local restaurant delivered with doordash it's the best way to get what you want to eat right now and right to your door Along with the restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, munchies, and other household items in under an hour. Yep, you're craving late night ice cream? Or maybe you just need to stock up for the week. With DoorDash, you get everything in one app. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national chains like Popeyes, Chipotle, Cheesecake Factory, Olive Garden, Denny's, Wendy's, we can keep going. <laughs> You're a big Olive Garden guy. Love Olive Garden. Ordering is easy and your items will be left safely outside your door when you choose contactless delivery drop-off. And right now, for a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off. That's amazing. And zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more 
when you download the DoorDash app and enter code JJ. I can't believe this deal, actually. I know. That's an awesome deal. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code JJ. Don't forget, that's code JJ for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. What interferes with your happiness? Is something preventing you from achieving your goals? Well, now there's help, BetterHelp. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist where you can connect in a safe and private online environment. And you can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. You can send a message to your counselor anytime and you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. And better yet, it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp has licensed professional counselors who are specialized in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, family conflicts, LGBT matters, and much more. We at The Old Man of the Three want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash JJ. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash JJ. Doesn't it seem like the world's against us from getting a good night's sleep this time of year? Whether it's the warm temperatures, neighbors partying, which is a problem that I have, crickets driving you nuts, it can be really hard to get some solid Z's. But when you have a purple mattress, you can sleep cool and comfortable no matter what the world throws at you. That's because only purple mattresses have the grid. Its unique ventilated design allows air to flow through to help you sleep cool, even when it feels like a thousand degrees out. And by the way, the purple mattress is not the color. Purple mattresses are the brand. And the grid is amazingly supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hips, no matter how you sleep. Unlike memory foam, which remembers everything, the grid bounces back as you move and shift. So you never get that I'm stuck feeling that you do with memory foam. It's true, Tommy. I've tried this mattress and it's incredibly comfortable. Try your purple mattress risk-free with free shipping and returns. I want to say that again. It's risk-free, free shipping and free returns. Financing is available too. Purple is comfort reinvented. Right now, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. Go to purple.com slash JJ and use promo code JJ. That's purple.com slash JJ. Promo code JJ for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash JJ. Promo code JJ. Terms apply. Drew, I have two specific defensive plays I wanted to ask you about. One is one of yours. One is one of your teammates. So uh, the Giannis block in the finals in game four, and then your strip in game five to the oop. Can you just like walk us through both of those plays from your perspective? Yeah. Um, game four, I remember I was in that, like in that corner. I was on the left side of the court. I was either in the corner or right, right around the elbow and, Book was driving and I feel like I'm like, all right, at this point, I don't want to help in because they'd been telling me not to help in because uh, they, they were getting wide open threes. And I'm actually caught in between. If you look at the at the clip, like I'm not in, but I'm not out. And Book just looks at the rim and sees DeAndre Ayton. And I'm not going to lie. I for sure thought it was it was a, it was a dunk. And Giannis just read it perfectly. Like, it was such an elite defensive play, uh, the the way that he read it. And he and he just put, like, he put it all out there, like, put his body on the line. Literally was looking at Devin, turned around, and it looked like he just jumped as high as he could and was like, nah, you're not going to make this. And after he got that block, I was like, holy shit. Like, that was an elite play. I, <laughs> that was it. That was, that was nice. Uh and then in game five, man, I just feel like I was in the right place at the right time. Like, if you know Book and you knew the time of the game, Book is going to want that last shot. And it was him and Tuck one-on-one. And I remember he pump fake and he got Tuck in the air. So I thought he was going to go up and try to shoot it after he pump fake. So I was coming in to, like, try to block it. And instead he turned – he literally turned into me. And put the ball in my face, so I, so I, I mean, I grabbed it and ripped as hard as I could. Um, 
So then after that, I'm going down the court and I'm like, nah, I'm dribbling the clock out. Like, what do I need to, we, we're up, we have the ball, I'm dribbling the clock out. And Giannis is like, just took off. You see his long legs and he's looking at like, telling me to throw the lob. He's like, true. So then I really just threw it up as high as I could. Like to where if, if it missed, it was, it was going to go out of bounds. But I threw it up really high. Uh, even knowing that, I mean, there's no way Chris could have got to it. But when he when he went up and got that ball, man, I was like, I was so hyped. It was it was such a crazy it was such a crazy play. I did what? think that I'm like, damn, Chris, you didn't have to push Giannis that hard. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was such a crazy play. I love CP, but he's not he's not getting that pass. Uh, try to put it in perspective, like how how much how much nuts does it take to throw that pass in that moment? When you see Giannis, when you see Giannis streaking and you're like, I know I'm supposed to dribble the ball out. Fuck it. I'm going for it. That's exactly what went through my head. <laughs> it was just like, fuck it. Like, he's going to go get it. And I feel like I just had so much faith that he was going to go and catch it. But the way he was calling for it, how determined he was, it was just like, man, fuck it. I can't, like... You don't fuck it up. <laughs> Make, give him, give him a good pass. Uh, but it was, it was just instinct, uh, I, I guess. Like everything happened so so quickly that it had to be. I mean, it, it had to be perfect. If it wasn't, then this could definitely we could definitely be having a different conversation. I want to sort of ask you if you've had any time to reflect on the last year of your life, your your own personal life. And I'm just kind of, kind of, I'm sure there's other stuff that's happened, but uh, you and Lauren welcomed your son into the world last fall. You got traded to the Bucks. You signed a, a what most people would describe as a massive contract extension, though based on the fact that you're shopping at outlet malls right now, maybe you don't think it is. You win first team, you get first team all defense. You win an NBA championship. You 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 win a gold medal. Your Q rating is now through the roof. Have you had time to reflect on this at all? No, I haven't. And I think me and Chris on the plane ride, well, on the plane ride to Japan, we slept a lot of it. On the plane ride back from Japan, once we landed, we're like, it's over. Like I can, I can go home, I can breathe. I can go golfing if I want to. I can, I can lay around all day if I want to. I get to play with my kids. But I feel like once we landed, it was just kind of like a weight that kind of fell off off your body. But I haven't I haven't had the chance to look back and be like, because the parade happened so fast. The parade happened two days after we won. And we didn't really get to enjoy that as much as possible because that was that was pushed pretty pretty fast. So um nah man I haven't I haven't had a chance yet and and what I really want to do is like talk to everybody and and see like how they feeling and how they doing cuz like this shit is this shit is crazy like one of the craziest experiences in my life was was the NBA finals and then on top of that I got to go to Japan for the Olympics It's wild I feel like talking it over with you is like me kind of reminiscing on it you know like being able to think like Two days after we won, we go to Japan. And that that same day, once we land, we we start playing. And I played like 30 minutes. Pop told me I wasn't going to be playing a lot of minutes. And I ended up playing most of the game. Well, I, you you kind of mentioned this earlier, but like I was shocked. And, and this is and this is not an affront to you or your commitment to your country or anything like that. I just know how you are with your family. Like after what we collectively as NBA players went through this season, um, I was shocked that you committed to doing it. Man, look, my wife's a thug, right? <laughs> she pressured me into it. Um, she she knew that if I didn't go, I could I could possibly regret it. Um, but you do know how much I love being with my family. I, I think I would have been I would have been okay at home, but. I think to experience that whole thing, man. And, and I mean, it's not like I was, I, I would, I, I was just playing. 
Uh, what's the, what's the difference from playing for two more weeks, huh? So how how many medals does Lauren have? Two. She has two, two uh, Olympic gold medals, and then she has a uh, a World Cup gold. To, to be, be clear, clear, she's still, still winning. winning. To be clear. Yeah. Oh no, no. Oh, by the way, but in 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 like the NWSL, she has. I think she has two championships. Okay. In the NWSL, no, she's like whooping my ass, man. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, uh, after you guys won, right afterwards, everyone obviously saw Giannis doing like the Chick Fil A run and the IG lives and everything like that. Did you do anything? Did you have anything like that? Were you with him for part of it? Like, did you have, or did you? Were you just with family, just kind of like basking in everything? I was. I was with family. I might have been sleeping, to be completely honest. Uh, we did go to Chick Fil A, and I didn't. I didn't get a 50 piece or like whatever. I almost had a triple double. I didn't do anything like that. I literally just went for lunch because I felt like I deserved Chick-fil-A. But, but yeah, nah, bro. I, honestly, I just, I just chilled. Matter of fact, I had to pack. <laughs> Wait, how, how was the, I think they asked you guys this when you got there. How was the flight? Oh, you mean like we're booked? Yeah. It's a little weird. I mean, it just is like you guys are all good guys, but it's a little weird. We figured we figured they got you a PJ. We figured you were not flying Alaska Airlines. We figured that. No, right. No, it, it was cool for me. <laughs> it was cool for me. I was straight. No, we we all slept, man. We all we all slept, and even over the even even over the trip, we got to know each other a lot more, which was really cool. Like, I love Book and, and how he approaches the game. Uh, how much he really wants to win. I think he has one of the prettiest shots that I've seen probably besides JJ's, but the way he like approaches the game and stuff, I'm like, I'm, I'm a big fan of book. Uh, but the flight there, I'm not even gonna lie. I was, I was just kind of thinking like, am I really doing, like, am I really going to Japan? Like, do I really want to do this? <laughs> I, w- <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about like, we just beat him. It was just kind of like, this is going to be a long ass flight. And then once we got on the plane, they're telling us that they're going to throw us right in the mix. And I'm like, we got to do, we, what am I doing? <laughs> you did it. You did it. Why do you think Chris is so good in the last two minutes of games? We have this conversation, me and Chris. Uh, I think that me, Chris, and Giannis have a really good, we, we mesh well together. So Giannis, you know, is going to give you 150% the whole game. And usually starting off, he's usually one of the ones who gets us out early. Um, I'll it, somewhere in between there, I'll make something happen. But it's usually Chris who takes us home. Like there's been games where like Chris has killed the whole game, but then there's been games where Chris will kind of like go under the radar, and then all of a sudden, either third or fourth quarter, he just go he he goes ham. Um, but I feel like me, him, and Giannis mesh so well together because different parts of the game, we all contribute quite a bit. And it's not like one person is trying to do it all the time or or, or do everything by themselves. But K-Mid is just unconscious, bro. Like, K-Mid does not care who's in front of him. Like, he's going to shoot it in your face. He might give you a little step back or a little bump, but people try to talk tr- like talk trash to him, and he just... He's just quiet and just starts quietly busting your ass. It's it's one of the funniest but craziest things I've ever seen. Well, I think I think a lot of that that mix you're talking about is what makes you guys special because not it's not often that three stars can, can sort of come together and understand that and say, all right, it's your time, it's your time, it's your time. It's not my time all the time, and that's the reason you guys won. And um, I just want to congratulate you again. I know I, I've, I've done that on the phone, but dude, I'm so happy for you. Uh, this this run you're on, man, it couldn't have happened to a better person and a better family. Uh, and we uh, we appreciate the time, man. Uh, go back to your family. We appreciate you, bro. <laughs> no, I, I thank you guys for having me. You know, I when you told me you wanted me to wanted me to join or, or, or talk, I'm like, yeah, I, I love talking to y'all. I don't know why. It's like a not really a therapy session, but it's like, it's always just a good vibe. I, I, I don't know why, but I appreciate y'all for having me on. And uh, again, thank y'all for everything, man. Like 
especially defensively, like defensive player or uh, first team. I really do think that y'all really helped me out with that because I'm not going to promote myself, but I feel like people respect what you guys say and y'all y'all speak the truth. So thank you guys. We'll take 2% of the credit. We'll take 2% of the credit. You get the other 98, all right? <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, bro. <laughs> Appreciate you. Thanks, bro. All right, y'all.